I want to preempt the start of this right away. And that is to say, no matter what has happened between you and your ex, no matter what they've said, just agree with them. Give them space and back off. My whole philosophy, well, not my philosophy, it's not a philosophy that I've invented, it's a philosophy that, it's a philosophy that I've adopted, is agree to the breakup. Give them the breakup. I've made numerous videos about this now. So just because your ex has said there is no chance of you guys getting back together, that's how they feel right now. In this particular time, in this particular day, month, year, whatever, it's how they feel right now. So you can't outlogic them. All you can do is to say, okay, I hear you. If you change your mind, you let me know. And this may just give you a chance. So let's get straight into it. As always, it's Nick, doing my best to get you through your breakups as easily and as healthily without the BS. If today's video is not enough for you, you know what you can do. My details are below in the description. You can reach out for me for a one-to-one -one, or you can join my free Facebook group and join the community there. So, you're feeling pretty shit right now and it's okay. Just want you to take a deep breath, step back. Your ex has said some nasty things to you. They've said some bad words and I get it. And you're searching for answers. You just want a direction to follow, maybe a waypoint, a guide, whatever you want to call it. But you're also holding on to that last bit of hope, that last bit of, shall we say, chance, the last bit of remnants of that relationship. But I always say that hope is a dangerous thing in, in breakups. But just to validate you, a little bit I'm not saying everything is hopeless the first thing I do say is look take this time focus on you use this time to process what's happened you've gone through a traumatic experience and it's going to take time to heal however so many of you recently are reaching out to me one-to-one -one in the Facebook group or on the YouTube channel and you're asking hey are they going to come back what are the chances of them coming back what does this mean so let's start with what does this mean there's no chance of you and I getting back together. That's what your ex has said. What does that mean? It means right there and then in that particular point in time, they do not see a future with you. That's exactly what that means. That's exactly how they feel. They're in their feelings. And it's okay that they feel that way. It's okay that they don't want to be with you right now. They're not a bad person for feeling that way. Whatever's happened has happened. They've emotionally checked out, be it temporarily or permanently we don't know at this point all you do know is that that particular point in time they have said hey i do not want to be with you romantically so you need to back off but what a lot of people do they take that as hidden meaning to try harder guys when someone says i do not want to be with you it is not code to try even harder take it on face value what I find a lot of people do, they try to flip those words in their head to fit their confirmation bias. And I've actually had people say to me, oh, what if no means yes? Guys, no means no. You have to accept that. And I think people have a crippling inability just to accept on face value what is in front of them. And I would dare say when I'm trying to give advice about breakups and try to guide you guys through this horrible time, my my advice is pretty simple. I you know, my job is to trim all the fat off the bone, cut out the bullshit and just say, Hey, this is the situation. I hear how you feel and I'm on your side. But this is what you have to do to be okay. And that means backing off. That means leaving your ex alone. That means just giving yourself this time and space to be with you, to reestablish what you're about. Because we do diminish ourselves when we are in relationships. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because we do have to compromise and we have to be there for our partners. And that's okay, that's part of commitment. But not to the point where you're self-sacrificing so much that you're no longer you. So use this time to find you again. And... The counterintuitive part of this is what people find really difficult to understand is that that will offer you the best 
possible chance of a reconciliation if a reconciliation is still on the cards for you when you're six months down the line, you've done all the work on yourself, and maybe you're thinking, hmm, now I've had some time apart from you, you're not as great as I thought you were, I'm actually in a good place, I'm actually okay being single, or you know, I've started seeing someone else and actually tick more boxes than you ever did, so why would I want you back? And right now, I know you can't visualize that because the, the thing that was making you happy has gone away. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say, look, this makes me happy. Please don't take that away from me. It's okay. But I also preach, and I'm a big believer in, is that you have to already be happy before you get into a relationship. And this is where a lot of people fail, is that you are depending on your partner to make up most of your happiness. And this is why most relationships do fail, because we're not loving ourselves enough to bring our 50% to that relationship. Okay, so is it the end? Possibly. Yeah, you may never see them again. And guys, I hear you. And look, it's literally... Like, today is two years to the day my ex and I split up. Two years to the day. And I would argue it's taken most of that time for me to be okay with myself and to rediscover and redefine myself and grow and adapt and level up. But I don't see that as a bad thing anymore. And I don't want to talk too much about myself. I'm just giving the example. I'm using myself as an example in that, did I want that breakup? No, I didn't. Didn't want the breakup. Wasn't 100% happy at the time, but I didn't want the breakup. I still to this day think things could have been different. Things could have been worked on. But at the same time, I haven't contacted my ex, not once. I've been tempted. I came close a few times, but I knew for my own sanity, and at least at the start of the breakup, I knew my best chance for a reconciliation was to go no contact. But I very quickly learned that my intentions of no contact cannot be to get my ex back. It had to be to get me back. No matter what happened between me and my ex, no matter what happened, if if, if she would have reached out or not, doesn't matter. The fact is she didn't, and I didn't reach out to her, and I am where I am. The whole point that was to get me back. The happy side effect that might have been, she would have reached out. And guys, I'd say in in my experience, I'd say 60, maybe 70% of cases, we do hear from our exes. And I'd say in my history, I've heard from, I'd say 70% of my exes that have dumped me, not not me dumping them, the one, the 70% what I'm referring to, the ones that have dumped me, I'd say 70% of them have reached out at one point or another. But it didn't necessarily mean that we was going to get back to them and to be back with them. And to be honest, by the time they reached out, I didn't want to get back with them. And the point is, guys, that is a very real possibility. You must accept the possibility that they may never, ever, ever come back. Okay? And I always tell everybody, just assume that's the way it's going to be. Because I've finished no contact. I've completed it. As in... I don't need to heal from that relationship anymore. I'm in a great place in my life. And I'm just... nothing. It, nothing's perfect. I won't say anything's perfect. I mean, I, I have some family issues that I'm dealing with at the moment. And that, that'd be on my control. But there's not much I can do about that. I'll just take it on the chin and roll with it. But the adventures that I've been on and the people that I've met and... I've now started dating someone new who is just amazing and she's a different type of woman to my ex completely and I never thought I would like someone as as much or more than I did my ex but I've grown, I've levelled up, my expectations and my wants and my needs and just my preferences with uh, a partner now are very different to what they were two years ago. So, maybe two years ago, the woman I'm dating now, maybe 
yeah, yeah, I still might think that she's great, but maybe I, I, I felt like, oh, okay, maybe we're not compatible. But the journey that I've been on has made me compatible, and I'm so happy that I've found someone that is on the same level as I am, on the same wavelength, and that's great. So I want to just let you know that there are other people out there. And I always say, what if the breakup was a gift? So don't sit there waiting for your ex. Don't sit there because they're off doing their thing at the moment. And you've got to let them do it. You should be doing the same thing because maybe your ex did say something like, oh, I just need some time or I just need a break and I'll think about it and I'll get back to you. But let me tell you something, guys, to quote Mark Manson, and you probably notice a theme in some of my videos that I'm, I'm a big Mark Manson fan. He's one of my favorite authors and I've pretty much read every book that, he, that, he's, that he's done. And a great quote, I can't remember which book it was from, but this is a Mark Manson quote, is that, and I may be butchering this, Actions never lie and words don't mean shit. So their actions will always speak louder than words. And you have to take their actions at face value. So if they've monkey branched, rebounded, cheated, or they're just being single, their actions are their actions. And what we typically have a hard time doing in breakups is just accepting the reality of the situation and the reason we have a hard time doing that is because it's fucking painful and i hear you guys i'm there with you been there done it got the t-shirt got the scars got the wounds got the medals whatever you want to call it been there done it got it but you'll be okay i promise you'll be okay and through my journeys over the last two years i've been some i've been in some emotional turmoil roller coasters there's been times that i've just wanted to give up i've cried in my therapy sessions i've cried in front of my friends about various different things not just about my ex and it's hard but we must embrace that pain because pain will equal growth growth will get you onto the path of happiness and happiness is not a destination it is a journey because you cannot be 100% happy 100% of the time. That is physically impossible. It's, it's unsustainable. So to wrap this up, your ex has said, there's no chance of us getting back together. And they may be genuine in that statement. But it's how they feel right now. So don't try to add logic feeling. You will never ever win that argument or that battle, whatever you want to call it. Just accept the feeling listen to understand not to rebut or to respond try to put yourself in their position from their viewpoint in their head something is not working for them that's why they are leaving the relationship because guys no one wakes up in the morning and think it's a good idea to break up with their long-term partner no one does that okay because our natural human survival instinct is to be with people there is survival there is sorry there is safety in numbers that is how the human race has survived through our shall we say better developed intelligence compared to other mammals and, and other animals and reptiles on the planet and whatever other species of animal you want to think of and that we worked out very early on that it's better to work as a team as in being in a, in a social group and that's why we get so much anxiety when we split up with someone because our natural survival instincts spike our anxiety and that's there, that's there to say, hey, you're safer than the group. If you don't get back in that group, you're not going to be safe. So your brain is trying to make you go back to, rather your, your anxiety is trying to make you go back to where you last felt safe. And if you can understand that and accept that for what it is, you will be able to function much better in your breakup. So right now, learn to function in the breakup. Learn to function in the pain. And I promise you, when you come out the other side, you will be so much stronger and so much better. And you will probably find someone better suited to you. I know because I'm doing it right now.
and that's all I have for today. I hope this has helped. As always, you are enough. Keep your chin up. I'll see you on the other side.